are listening to episode number 73 with my guest, Melissa Kirk. If you're someone who wants to make major changes in their life, someone who wants to achieve their goals, or maybe you're someone who knows this is not as good as it gets, but you have no idea where to start. On the Reinvent You podcast, we explore different types of people, their successes and failures and how they reinvented themselves to create the life they love. It's our hope that from hearing their stories that you too may have more insight into what it takes to build a life that you envision for yourself. Here to help you do that is performance and life coach, Travia Stewart. My guest today on the podcast, people hire her to get results they've sought after and explore her out of the box ideas and use her expertise to find and align with their passion and purpose, shift their mindset to be empowered and create the lifestyle they desire. She helps them find purpose and purchase their dream home, attract the clients they wanna work with, improve their relationships, systemize and grow their business, also improve their health. She helps them to get to the root of the issues going on in their lives and turn things around to match their dreams, their goals, and their aspirations. My guest today is Melissa Kirk, and on the podcast, we explore Melissa's journey. She does some really, really cool stuff with reading your, your scientific hand, which I found so cool. We also talk about mindset and the role that it plays in your life and the fastest way to finding your purpose, your passion, and success, among so many more things. Tune in right now for the episode with Melissa Kirk. So, Melissa, welcome to the Reinvent You podcast. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, you know, there's some uh, there are some things that you know I have to like hold myself back before I ask, like especially that whole scientific hand analysis. I find that so interesting. But we're not going to dive right in there yet. We're going to figure out who is Melissa. Why do we care what she has to say, and a little bit about your journey. Okay. So, um, you know, I was married about twenty years. And I was in a pretty toxic relationship that by the time I left the relationship, um, I had three kids and I had been a stay at home mom for a while. I had been, I had gone to college and worked in the corporate world, but then after I had kids, I started um, staying home with them. And I found myself in a place where um, I was leaving my ex, all my identities and mm. was very lost. I didn't know what I was good at. According to him, nothing. <laughs> I didn't know what I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, so I was pretty much lacking confidence. I was actually pretty ill from all the emotional trauma. Mm -hmm. And I started on a journey to reinvent myself and to find myself. <laughs> yes. And to figure out how to make some change. <laughs> right. So um, along my journey, so I went to massage school and I did a lot of healing work with my clients mm -hmm. and was connected with a lot of healing people. And I started to realize that I was pretty good at knowing what was going on with someone's body and mm. recon intu recognizing intuitively like this is off. And then found that when my clients would go to the doctor, the doctors didn't know how to fix it. So I started doing some more trainings on learning how to fix, fix the body and how to make change in the health. But also um, I started to really learn the correlation between our emotional body, our mental body, our physical body and our mm. spiritual body and how they're all connected. And so I started getting training kind of and, and doing healing techniques on myself that we're all encompassing at, you know, attacking the problem from every angle. And so one of the things I started doing was it's called theta healing mm. and it's the theta brainwave, which is what is accessed during NLP or hypnosis um, and also 22 different classes in theta healing. And it's really mindset. It's working with your belief systems, but it's about rewiring your brain to be empowered for the results that you want. Mm -hmm. So, and part of that journey, like you mentioned, I did, um, I came upon scientific hand analysis 
which gave me a lot of information about what my purpose was here, what my yeah. repeating patterns were and what helped me back and really gave me a blueprint um, for where I was really like my soul's desire where to go. So mm -hmm. one issue that I recognized was that in, I do astrology, I do human design, I do um, scientific hand analysis, but they give you a great blueprint of your potential and like who you are on a soul level. But then you get in the way when you yeah. go to try to actualize, right? So what I, one of the first things in the hand analysis, um, everything for me and my purpose and what my strengths are is about my verbal message and my ability to communicate and what I have to say. It's mm -hmm. the same in my astrology. It's the same in my human design. And here I am doing um, massage work where I'm in a dark room with one person. I'm not supposed to talk. Right. So no matter how good I was at that, no matter how much money I made doing that or whatever, I was never going to feel fulfilled because I can't, it's not about my verbal message. So as I just began to develop, I started working on all my issues around the healing and health issues that I had from, you know, the abuse, the, um, my lacking of confidence, my, my, just my own self-talk and my head trash. Mm -hmm. And I just started to really, my life started to transform as I started to think differently. And as I started to rewire my brain using these techniques and the healing and, you know, it's very empowering when you start to understand what's creating the mess you've got in front of you. Right. So those are a lot of the tools that I combine when I'm working with my clients to help them get out of their own way, mm -hmm. you know, see the, see the potential and the blueprint to get there and then teaching them how to make it happen. Right. So I love that. So you mentioned like the, you said the emotional, the physical and the spiritual bodies were connected. And I, you know, and I get that, but someone's listening to this podcast going, how so? <laughs> So how, like, can you expound on that, that statement a little sure. bit? Yeah. So when I was talking about that, I was pretty good at knowing what was going on in someone's body. Mm -hmm. um, so your emotional body, you can each, each organ is connected to a different emotion. So really? for instance, yeah. Well, I didn't know that. So for instance, like the nervous system is really about fear right okay the, the kidneys are about worry the adrenals can be kind of about anger and moving forward but it's about having fun and action the liver can be about anger the gallbladder is resentment and bitterness you know the heart is about heart issues you know matters of the heart the lungs are about grief so when I'm working with someone and I'm realizing like one of these organs is out of balance. So let's say like they're having, they have COPD or some kind of breathing and lung issue. So I can talk to them about unresolved grief because the emotion of the lungs is about their grief. And so through the grief, you can use plant medicine. You know, a lot of the woods, if you're looking at like essential oils or herbs, it's, mm -hmm. you know, like cedar wood or sandalwood. Those are really healing for the for the lungs, but also dealing with their unresolved grief. And then, you know, how they think about things. Mm -hmm. So when you start working with all of those things at one time, the healing is very quick. So you're attacking it from multiple angles and pretty much everything in the body. Like one, some of the theta healing classes I teach are about, um, about the body and about the organs and the systems, right? Because there's a digestive system, there's a circulatory system, a lymphatic system. Mm -hmm. Each system in the body has a different set of belief systems. And so you start working on, if you have disempowering beliefs around that are connected with that system, it's not gonna operate properly. So it gives me clues what's going on physically in the body. If you go to the doctor and they give you a diagnosis, then I know what systems I'm working with, which organs I'm working with, which emotions you're working with, which foods and you know herbs and drugs can be affecting it. And when you work with all of them together, it makes everything, it, it really shifts things quickly because the body really operates out of vibration. Mm -hmm. 
So if, um, so like if you are told to take a certain herb because of a certain problem in the, in the system or an organ in the body, mm -hmm. whatever herb that you're taking, it vibrates at a certain, certain frequency. And what happens when you ingest it is that the organ that's struggling and not operating at the right vibration can match that herb. It can match the vibration it's supposed to be at. It's kind of like a tuning fork. If you hit an A tuning fork, all the A tuning forks will go off because they're all hitting the same vibration. So if you take in herbs or oils or foods that are vibrating at the correct vibration that heals that organ, it has a lot of healing effects. Does that make sense? You know, I am just thinking about some of my peeps who listen and they're going, what in the, what, what? What is she talking yeah. about? I eat a hamburger and there's nothing that's vibrating. Like, so, you know, and I, you know, of course, every, thank you for sharing all of that. Everything that you just said, you know, just is like producing more questions in my mind because I'm curious, right? So let's say, like, you know, let's, let's make it, you know, like, let's have an example, right? So for instance, I was in early 2020, I had early stage breast cancer, right? So I come to Melissa and, you know, and it's, 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 it's cool now. I had a double mastectomy, you know, it's been healed, but according to, you know, the diag the prognosis from the doctor and I come to you, what is like, what, what are the organs that are affected and, and what's going on with that vibrational frequency? So, you know, those are personal female organs. So looking mm -hmm. at your own self image, looking at, you know, how you hold yourself as a person and like how you, um, how positive are you? What kind of thoughts are you thinking? Are you putting yourself down? Um, you know, and cancer is about anger. It holds the vibration of anger. So, mm -hmm. so dealing with your anger. So one thing that I know when, um, and cancer can't survive in a body that is um, really clean, right? It, it doesn't, it's all the, the uh, you know, quote unquote American diet that feeds all of these, all the destruction. And, and what cancer is, is a, basically a rogue cell that keeps massively reproducing itself. It's not supposed to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So I would really help you to start looking at how you can start loving yourself more as a, as a person, as a um, body of light. And because most of the times when you have like a sexual kind of issue, you know, a mm -hmm. sexual organ, reproductive organ, um, it can be a lot about our own feelings about ourself. Mm. Okay. And what happens in the brain is we have these neural pathways and we have these belief systems that our unconscious mind is always looking to support that belief system, right? Mm -hmm. So it looks for the evidence and anything not supporting that, whatever this belief is, is dismissed. Right. So I have one example of this when, um, you know, when I was raising my kids, I, my oldest would, could be quite mean and my younger son was usually pretty nice. So if, if my younger son did something mean, I would think, well, someone must've really made him mad. They deserved it. Right. Because he's usually nice and right. it doesn't match up with my belief system that he's nice. And then if my older son did something nice, I would think, well, what, what's happening here? Because like, it doesn't match up with the belief systems, right? Right. So we kind of do that when we're looking for evidence of what we, what we believe to be true. And when we start rewiring the brain and thinking about things differently, we start getting different results. Mm -hmm. So those are the kinds of things though, like I would work on um, with someone that has like a breast cancer or like a prostate cancer or something like that is about their feelings around themselves and their feelings about loving themselves and where they feel detrimental about themselves or putting themselves down. Okay. Wow. That, you know, and, and I'm just, I'm taking it all in because I never would have identified myself as having any kind of anger. You know, I, 
you know, I, I'm happy, but, but something about, <laughs> this is a lot of information, Melissa. I know. <laughs> we just met each other, my goodness. But there's something about, I feel so much more free mm -hmm. without breath. Mm -hmm. And so when you said those things, it's like, Ooh, was there some anger there? You know, I would have never, you know, pulled that button, that lever, that that was anger. But there is a sense of, whew, the weight's been lifted off of my shoulders. And, you know, I mean, I always thought I was a pretty confident person before, but now like my confidence is, you know, whew, even, yeah, so much more than it ever was. Awesome. So, yeah. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that. My goodness. Yeah. yeah. That's so interesting, you know, that every part of the body, the organs have their own belief system. And so that is so intriguing. Now, in, in, in tying all of that together, right? And so let's talk a little bit about the scientific hand analysis, because when I when I started doing a little bit of research on that, because I was preparing for this episode and I was like, well, oh, I've never heard of that. And so now I think about, cause I'm from new, I'm from new Orleans. And I, then I go, Oh, when I'm in the French quarter, I go and let them read my palm. That is that scientific hand analysis because they're reading the lines. Yeah. Um, so that's a piece of it. When I learned the database on the scientific hand analysis, it is mm -hmm. about the lines in the palm and the shape and the everything like that. Yeah. But the meat, the meat of their system is about the fingerprint patterns because those don't change. Okay. So the lines in your hands, they are a reflection of your brain. And so it tells me, I can see how you think. I can see what is blocking you, what's troubling you by the way the lines are. But the fingerprint patterns, you take all 10 fingerprint patterns and put it into the database and calculate what someone's purpose here is here and what they're here to do and how they're designed to make that impact. And then their life lesson is also in the fingerprint patterns. It's a ranking system of fingerprint patterns. And so with the lesson, what it is is this is the repeating pattern that blocks you and, and prevents you from living that potential to stepping into your purpose. Because if you don't manage it, it always holds you back. Yeah. <laughs> Do you scan their hand or can Melissa look at my hand and go, girl, you got issues <laughs> with that, that, and that. Like, what, what, what is, how does that work? <laughs> So usually what I do is I, I have somebody print you, I get actual fingerprint sheets, like from a police distribution oh, source Okay. and you print your hands. And then I look at the prints because I can see them, you know, I can give a reading to someone just looking at their hand, but the detail of it really shows up when you ink print it. Okay. So, but yeah, you, when you look at it, at the hands, I mean, one thing for me, and the reason why I love the hand analysis is because it's attached to you. It says in the Bible many times, like that your, thing, your purpose is in your hands, right? I bet you didn't know that, but it's in there a lot. But the one thing I like that I sets it apart, because I have a degree and I have a psychology degree. And in the psychology, we were always learning about all these tests, right? Now people do a DISC test or a wealth dynamics or mm -hmm. strength finders. But what is happening is that you are answering questions about you. Well, if you knew so much about you, you probably wouldn't be asking the questions. And right. so what's the different about this system is that it's not based on your knowledge of yourself. It's based on what you came in with and your, what is in your fingerprint patterns. Right. So like for me, I, I would never have thought that my purpose was being in front of an audience, having a verbal message from one to many. Mm -hmm. That would never have occurred to me because my lesson is the paralyzing fear of rejection. So as I'm living out my paralyzing fear of rejection, my spouse rejects me all the time, right? So right. like now things start making sense. Like, well, I set that all up because that's what I was trying to overcome mm -hmm. to experience and then I had to deal with that to be able to, like, if, if you think everyone's going to reject you and badmouth you, you're not going to get up and on a stage in front of people, right? Right. But so the formula helped me to understand exactly what needed to, what I needed to work on. 
and where my path was going to be successful. Mm -hmm. I never would have come up with that from answering questions myself. Got it. That's what I love about it is that the accuracy and, um, you know, and the consistency, because when I look at my astrology chart, Mercury, which is about communication is in my place in my chart of business. So like it's saying the same thing, it's about my verbal communication. So Mm -hmm. there's a consistency across the databases that really puts you in a place to be empowered in who you are and what you're here to do and the impact you're supposed to make. And so that's why um, it was so instrumental to me, but that's what I'm working on with my clients also, because when they start to understand this blueprint and then they can get out of their own way, they know their formula and it's much easier to execute it when you have the blueprint sitting there with you. Right. Wow. And so like, could you look at my hand and go like, like, I think, I think, you know, I know the lines are different on people's hands, but you know, I've always gone, I've got this big M right here and that is for money. But yes, I've heard that before. That is not in the scientific hand analysis database, but I will tell you if you put, put your hand up so I can see it. So yeah, you you're a very like you're very directed and very ambitious and you it takes you nothing really gets in your way (laughs) and see how your except myself and see how yes and see how your thumbs are open like that this is like this is like this is someone that wants to be an employee at target and wants to be there until they're 80 making 15 dollars an hour this is someone that's like I'm in charge. Get out of my way. Don't tell me what I do to, and I'm captain of the ship and here's everywhere in between. Right. Yeah. So you, you're doing your own podcast. You're like capable. The thumb is about manifesting in results. And so you're very capable. You don't need anyone like to, you know, yeah, it's nice to get support and things like that. But if you didn't have the support, you're going to get stuff done anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to work. I'm going to work that out. <laughs> yes. Nothing. That's not going to stop you. Yeah. And then like your heart line, your heart line, you have a little bit of um, desire for aloneness and alone time and hermity, but then you also are a giver and you want to make an impact and like, you're always kind of caretaking. Mm-hmm. But the point with that is just making sure that in order to do that caretaking, you have to take care of you first. Right. So. Boom. All right. You know, and there was one time, uh, <laughs> My sp- we had our we had our palms red in the French Quarter again, you know. Uh-huh. And then one of these is the lifeline, right? Yes. And her lifeline was, oh, you're gonna outlive everybody. And yeah, so you have like, a strong lifeline. Oh, it's the one that wraps around your thumb, so it starts right above your thumb and goes down to the middle of your palm. Oh, it curves. It curves. okay. Like this one, this yep. one. Well, you have two, so that's why she's saying that is because you have this big. You have this big outer one, but then you have another one kind of inside of it. It's kind of like a, um, a strengthener. Like you have two, it can mean you live a double life, but it also can mean, it also can mean that you've got like this backup system. Yeah. You know, like this reinforcement to live out the life because you have a very Mm. strong lifeline. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. What do you mean by double life? What does that mean? Like, it can mean a lot of things. It can mean like, you know, you went to school and became a lawyer. And then when you were 50, decided you're going to, you know, be like, I'm going into the Peace Corps and I'm going to start, you know, like a completely new life. Yeah, that's exactly what I did. Okay, well, see, it shows up in your hands. (laughs) Thank you for validating me, girl. (laughs) Wow. Okay. This is so insightful, Melissa. So when you're working with your clients, right, what is the fastest way to finding purpose, passion, and success aligning every bit of that? Is that human design? Well, I like doing, I like information from all of them, but the human design system is amazing. Um, It really lays out the information in a way that's easy to execute Mm -hmm. and It's very straightforward because if you look at a human design chart, um, 
what's colored in your chart is what you're here to work with. The other places, the white areas of your chart are where you're here to learn. Mm -hmm. And so if you, if you understand your formula of like, you know, I came in and in my toolbox, I have a hammer, a screwdriver and a wrench. Right. And then someone else came in and they have, you know, like power tools and a hard hat and a ruler. Okay. Right. So you don't have those parts. You got what you got. So a lot of times what happens is people are trying, they're not recognizing what they have and the strengths and the genius that they own. Mm -hmm. And when they start to understand that and start trying to be something that stop trying to be something they're not, it yeah. makes things easier. You know, like for me, the one example for that is, you know, I went to, I went to college, I have a business degree. I took a lot of accounting classes, but I suck at doing my own books, even though I know how, well, guess what? It's not really like the detail stuff in that, in, in a, um, you know, that goes into the accounting. That's yeah. not my thing. I'm really good at vision and being like the CEO and the overseer and telling people the direction that's mm -hmm. what's in my chart. So I will sit there and wait six months to reconcile the details of my banking account. Not because I can't, it's not my thing. It's not mm -hmm. what I want to do. And I procrastinate it. So that's what I'm helping people do is really understand this is what you're good at. Right. Stay in this lane. And if this over here in this lane needs to be handled, find someone that's in, that's in their lane yeah. and everyone stays in their lane. And then everyone supports each other. It's efficient. The success is much better. And the biggest part is that you feel fulfilled. See, like, yeah. I mean, I could do podcasts all day long because I'm built for a verbal message. So yes. <laughs> that's what puts me in my genius, right? Mm -hmm. I don't want to sit there and do like tedious desk work where some people, if they never had, if they could just bury themselves in their work and never have yeah. to talk to someone, that's their genius. So it's matching you with who you are instead yeah. of what you've been told to do, yep. supposed to do all that. I love that. And so, and so I resonate with what you just said, because one of the, honestly, one of the main reasons why I do a podcast is I love having these kinds of conversations that I can't have like over dinner with friends or my spouse or because they'd be like, what, what you talking about? Yes. What? You know, law of attraction, what? That's woo woo stuff. Right. And so I, this is an excuse so that I can use my verbal communication and talk about all the things that I always want to talk about. Yeah. I love that. So let's dive a little bit into law of attraction. I feel like that's what I've been attracting on the last few podcasts. I've had a lot of spiritual people and I've had mindset and law of attraction. And like the guy that I, I just had, um, he, his comes out and he's talking about, you know, meditation doesn't work. And I was like, what? But you know, that was a catchphrase, that kind of thing. So what is Melissa's take on the law of attraction? And do you use it in your work? I definitely do. I am also trained in law of attraction. So they all fit so well together. Yeah. And again, that is a lot about by um, mindset, but it's about vibration. So mm -hmm. the way the law of attraction works, and I love it when people say, oh, I don't believe in that. And so my response always to them is, well, you don't have to be believe in gravity either, but guess what? You're not <laughs> going to start floating up off your chair because you don't believe in it right? Yeah. So understanding how it works is the key because it doesn't, you're not absolved from it because you don't believe in it. Mm -hmm. And basically what it is, is vibration matches vibration. And so if you are really a positive person, then you raise your vibration and you're able to attract from a higher level of vibration right. than when you're in a low and, you know, there's, all the different moves. And it starts from, it starts with how you feel, how you think, then what your beliefs are, and then it actualizes. Mm -hmm. So, and, um, you know, you're not, you can't attract what you're not a match for. And so yeah. one thing I always tell my clients is that if you want something different, you have to be someone different. Yeah. So who do you need to be to get what you're wanting? Wow. I love that. You can't attract what you're not a match for. Yeah. Huh. And the way the law of attraction, <laughs> the way the law of attraction works is it's putting you in the flow. So if you mm -hmm. think of it as a stream going down the river, everything that you want is downstream. But what do we do? 
We put our boat in the river and we turn upstream and start paddling as hard as we can and we get nowhere. It's yeah. that push of resistance. That's not the way it works. The other thing is already being, so if you're wanting to call in something that you're not currently having, mm -hmm. you have to actually experience the feeling of having it and be the vibration that will attract it. Yeah. And so it's almost, you know, like, it's kind of like faking it till you make it, but you have to believe it. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you just are like trying to go through the motions, it doesn't work. It's about vibration and it's about who you are. Yeah. And so it's always an inside job if we're not having what we want. Absolutely. I love that. Melissa, what do you think your purpose is on this earth? I know, I mean, you've done all this work. You've done some purpose work. Yes. What's I have. your purpose? I think my purpose here is to provide perspective, perspective to others, to get mm -hmm. them on their track that they can't see on their own. Yeah. That's I a lot that. of the, that's a lot of the um, general themes in my charts mm -hmm. is just that I have a unique perspective. I see things from all angles and I'm a great guide for getting people on track. Right. I love that. And so, and with my clients, I do a lot of purpose work as well. How do you think that helps them achieve the level of success that they want to achieve? Because some people are just like, I just got to make this money. I just got to, you know, take care of my family. But if they're not in their purpose, there's a disconnect, right? Can you speak to that? Well, from my experience, being on, on purpose is the first step because the money follows the passion and the energy vibration of that fulfillment. Like mm -hmm. I said in the beginning, you know, when I learned that my purpose is about my verbal expression mm -hmm. and my message, and I'm in a dark room with a massage client where I can't talk, right? I'm never going to feel fulfilled. I don't care how much money I make. It's not fulfilling for me. And mm -hmm. fulfillment is the goal, yeah. not the money because the money doesn't make you happy. But if you love what you do and you do what you're naturally inclined to do, mm -hmm. it's effortless. You want to show up at work. You want to do your thing. You want to make your impact on the people you're here to serve. Yeah. And that, that is where I feel like that's what our, everyone's goal is. They just may not realize it. Yeah. Cause you can't chase money. The money will find you when you're living your purpose. Hmm. I love that. Yeah. And I 100% I believe that. I follow that methodology as well. And so if we're talking about, you know, because we know a lot of, well, I can't say a lot because I haven't done the research, but I know that business owners, you know, we, we in order to manifest some things, but they're not thinking, they're not talking in this language, right? So- right. Do you work with business owners and how do yes. you get them to understand this woo, -woo part of? <laughs> so you know? people actually are waking up to the component that this adds to their life. And one thing I know about, I work with people that are multimillionaires that are running like big corporations that are, mm -hmm. what they're realizing now is that they don't get this woo woo stuff. They don't get this like mindset, yeah. hocus pocus stuff. But what they do know <laughs> is that they hear it works. Yeah. And so they don't care. They just wanted, they're just like, well, I need to get that. I need to do that. I need to learn about that. And they come work with me. And you know what? They don't argue with you. I tell them that this is what's blocking you. This is what you need to do. Mm -hmm. And they, I meet with them again in a week and they're like, okay, I did that. Everything's working better now. Now, what do I do? And I'm like, what? You know, because they don't have all these blocks of yeah. you know, when they're a successful business person, they just get on task and they do it. They don't like overthink it. They don't get in their own way. And I mm -hmm. find that they're, they're actually the easiest ones. Right. And they don't have to understand it. You know, they don't have to like, they don't question why they just go, okay, well, this is what she says. She's got this toolkit and it works. Mm -hmm. And I just need her to fix me. And then they go on their way. Right. And you but I think it's becoming more mainstream. You know, Tony Robbins yeah. is helping with that. <laughs> he is. He is. 
Yes, I'm a big Tony Robbins fan. I actually have some Robbins Madonna's training. So <laughs> absolutely, I love it. I love it. So Melissa, as we begin to wrap up, how what is the work that you do with clients? We know what you're doing with business owners, but how, how do you work with you know, the average Joe and Jane? So one of the things um, in my chart is really about crisis and conflict resolution. So I work with people in their relationships. Mm -hmm. But what I really work with people is that on the whole person, so if you come to me, I had a business client that came to me to get more business. And I realized as I'm talking to her that her problem is her relationship with her adult son that she doesn't have boundaries with. Mm -hmm. So for six weeks, we were working on that relationship. And at the end of it, she came to me and said, okay, but when are we going to start working on my, my business? And I said, well, how much money are you making? She had tripled her money because the problem was the relationship. So one thing I'm really good at is getting to what's really at the bottom line and what's, you know, we have all these symptoms of no money or health or a divorce or whatever. And these are all symptoms, but what's the root causing it? Right. So all the tools that I use really help me to get to that. And I help them to get what they want. And most of the time, what I'm helping them with is getting clarity around that. Because if you ask someone what they want, they usually don't know. They know they don't like where they are, yeah. but they're not clear on where they're going. Mm -hmm. So that's what I help people with, understanding who they are and who they are not, teaching them how to align with that, teaching them what's in the way, and also just you know getting clarity of who they want to serve and the impact they want to make. So yeah. I do that. You know, That's what I love doing with my clients. Yeah. Nice. Help that them. sounds incredible. Yeah. Perfect. So how can they connect with you? If somebody's listening right now and they want to pull over the car, burn rubber and write some things <laughs> down, how can they connect with Melissa right now? So my website is Melissa Kirk, K I R K dot mm -hmm. com. And there's a content that it talks about the services and things I do, but also there's just a discovery session right. so that I can, cause I do a lot of custom um, packages for people depending on what they want and what they need. And so I do a discovery call. You can sign up for that. And we'll meet and chat and see if um, we have a good fit. Yeah. I love doing that. Boom. And I did, and I do, I will put in the notes. I know you have a newsletter that people can sign up for. Yeah. Through your, and through I also have a, yeah. So if they go on my site, they can sign up for that. And there's also a how to manifest anything ebook. So they can download that. It has some exercise in it. It's about the law of attraction. It's about mm -hmm. money mindset, all that kind of stuff. Boom. Okay. And they can also get their human design chart, right? Yes. What's which which one are you? I, I'm a generator. What are, I'm what are a manifesting you? manifesting generator. Ah, <laughs> the hybrid. Yes. Love it. Love it. Love it. So very cool. Melissa, I tell you what, I'm gonna look at my hand differently now. <laughs> yeah. And I always thought, and it's the weirdest thing because whenever I like don't have shoes on. And I just, I love to spread my toes. Like I love for them to kind of air out. And I feel like it's what I do with my fingers because, and so who knew that that was a strength? I yes. love it. Yeah. So thank you for all of this valuable insight, because I'm like, if I'm going to do a podcast and talk to people, then I'm going to get something too. So thank you for yeah, my palm. <laughs> Perfect. Well, Melissa, thank you so much. I just, I love your energy. I love what you're doing. And, you know, this was just so insightful. And I know that people will find value in everything that you provided today. So thank you for this. Yeah. Thanks for talking with me today. It was great. Absolutely. If you like what you're hearing, and perhaps you're interested in having a complimentary conversation with me, click the link at the bottom of the show notes. Thank you so much for listening. If you even want to know more about what I'm up to, head over to TraviaStewart.com. And if you like seeing the videos of the podcast, every episode is on my YouTube channel. Take care, guys.